Greetings, YouTube, and all you YouTubers and Tubets. Thrash Pondo here with another one of my infamous wretched recaps, and I think we can all guess which the comic book of choice is going to be today. Yep, Gold Key Boris Karloff from the Thriller series, an adaptation, and this one is a gem. But before I get started, I want to make a couple of shout-outs. First of all, to Danny Staten and his channel, That Fat Comic Book Guy, of which I have shamelessly borrowed his concept. Oh, and another special shout-out today. Please, everyone, and I do mean everyone, please check out Things That Rot Your Brains, brought to you by Dr. Leon Redfield. Brings out some absolutely amazing stuff, uh, mostly in the field of vintage sci-fi horror, but some great stuff for you music lovers out there. He's been putting out some really wonderful content, of which I am hooked, and you should join Dr. Hook as well. That's Dr. Leon Redfield at Things That Rot Your Brains. And, oh, and as always, don't forget the like, the subscribe, the share with your friends and or enemies, and all that sort of rot. And anyway, without further ado, let us begin. And here you see Boris Karloff, Tales of Mystery, uh, adapted from his thriller series. And here we see a chandelier monster. So you know what? Let's get into it. Let's see where this chandelier monster takes us. And let there be light. Oh, and look, here's an advertisement. An advertisement for rings. Yes, because that's what all us kids in the 70s wanted to do. If we wanted jewelry, we looked into comic books. And moving forward, they call this thing the chameleon creature. Hmm, I wonder why. But anyway, these gents who said they've already lost half their part of this thing have decided rather than to run away, run away, decide to lose the other half. Finding the uh, chameleon creature brought to you by Boris Karloff. And when they enter, oh, I'm sorry, and when they enter the haunted house, they're like, hmm, can't seem to find it, huh? Where is it? Where is it? And all of a sudden, kablooey, the thing goes nuts and has turned itself into a chair because this clown decided, well, when you're on a monster hunt, the best thing you can do is sit down and have a good rest. And anyway, the chair monster kills him and they decide that they will continue their quest. And, well, before they continue, they want to do some light shopping. And here we see, and I'm sure you guys have seen these before, these are what they call patches. Now, patches used to be really, really cool for poor kids whose clothes had holes worn through them. You would take a patch and sew them onto said hole. But then the patches themselves became a fashion accessory. And so you had designer patches. They don't use them so much now because, like my granddaughter, people want to buy pants with holes already in them. Gee, I don't, I just, I just don't know. So anyway, they're walking on the floor when all of a sudden, oh look, the chameleon monster has turned itself into the floor, into a living linoleum. And when I first read this, oh, I don't know, back in like 78, 79, I was in hysterics because one of the funniest sequences, for some reason this thing really struck me funny, probably because I love horror movies, Laverne and Shirley, a lady and squeaky, came back from a horror movie that freaked them out. It was called The Devil's Bungalow. And they said one of the guys was eaten by living linoleum. And I thought that was so wacky until I actually saw how it could work. But anyway, these guys press the attack and, oh, hey, remember that chandelier? Well, yeah, you guessed it. Arg! Why they don't just leave the house at this point, I don't know. But anyway, somehow these incompetents, what's left of them, manage to shoot the thing and it runs out and starts bleeding and they chase it out to the edge of a cliff, which for some reason has a very big rock at the edge. Maybe the, uh, Mr. Shatner's going to push it down onto a gorn. Don't know. But anyway, they go, huh, it must have dove into the sea and drowned because, you know, lizards can't swim. But what they really, really, really should have noticed, as I'm sure you noticed Mr. Karloff is putting out this point, Gee, they really should have noticed this bleeding rock. And we move on to the man who cried monster. Now, gee, I wonder what this segment is going to revolve around. Huh, let's see. This crazy old drunken farmer calls the cops because sea monkeys! Yes, folks, you and all your friends can indulge in sea monkeys. These mystic, wildly created little 
creatures that have come from uh, experiments in uh, the creation of new sea life. They were brine shrimp. Literally, they were a very small form of brine shrimp. Oh, and also, you could also buy magic tricks because that's what all of the kids in school wanted. He wanted some clown to come in and perform a magic trick. But anyway, so anyway, they're out looking, and they're out looking, and they're looking for this monster, and hey, look at these monster footprints. Yeah, I know. There's something odd about these monster footprints, don't you know? Well, gee, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's because, uh, oh, I'm getting ahead of myself there. But anyway, there's something wacky going on here, and oh, there, they do show it, um, the foot, it's the same size as this common household spade. Mm, common if you do your own brickling. So when they leave, they tell him to cut the crap, and if they call him again, he'll be in trouble. And how prophetic they are, because guess what? They get a phone call, and they're like, please help, help, please, please, another monster. And they go, no, no, we don't believe you. And he goes, no, legit, there is a monster this time. Ah! And here we learn the wages of sin. Wasn't that an old Lovecraft? There was some old Lovecraft story from, well, from the time of Lovecraft, where rather than just run out of the house away from the monster, this woman decides to use her phone to call for help. And you actually hear the barking, creaking, croaking of the monster in the background while it kills her. Yeah, that, that was when Oliver Reed made a, um, made a uh, rendition of it. I will have to Google it a little late for this. But yeah, I'll look up Lovecraft and... Screaming monster. But anyway, here we see, uh, oh, these were, uh, these were stick-on, they called them. Uh, you would actually just apply these. Um, they also came in with a variety called iron-on patches. They actually had shops, believe it or not. They had shops back in the day where you would actually, uh, you'd go in, you'd pick out a t-shirt, you'd pick out a decal, and they would iron it on right in front of you, like for you. Um, now you just walk into any, uh, you know, Dollar General or Five Below, and they have walls of cheap shirts with cute characters on them. But anyway, here we have another segment. It's called, uh, The Stocking Time Bomb. They really do kind of give away the ending, and the, so I'm just going to kind of skip through this. There's some atomic-style monster running amok, 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 running amok, um, and they decide to track it. In a helicopter. Because, you know, these atomic monsters don't stand out at anything like you see. This looks like Ben Grimm if he hasn't got enough vitamin D. But anyway, they're going to, like, uh, follow it. And they're going to try to kill it. And yada yada, blah, blah, blah. They, oh, they're going to try to catch it first. Because one thing you don't want is you want the thing to run off. And, oh, hey, look. Oh, kids, roach designs are now available. Iron on to... Wow, uncanny. They actually have iron-on decals. So if you're too cheap, or should I say, your folks are too cheap to take you to one of those cheapo iron-on shirt store tourist traps, you can send away and have your mother or grandmother iron one on for you. They wouldn't let me touch an iron. One little greased fire, and I'm banned for anything that might ignite. But anyway, long story short, they're trying to catch the monster. They're trying to catch the monster, and you probably see where this is going. They catch it, but again, this thing is atomic. What happens to things which are atomic? Uh, yep, you guessed it. Kaboom! I remember being 11 years old reading this and thinking, how could they have not seen this coming? And now we go to the last vignette, the microbe war. Gee, this one didn't age well. Yeah, you guessed it. Scientists, they're experimenting with microbes. And, well, <laughs> it caused something of a pandemic. And what do they think they're going to do? They're going to use microbes to fight microbes. And they come up with these sort of microbial creatures. They look really, really cool, but wouldn't work in a, as a microbial life form. And, well, oh, again... A hundred toy soldier army men. These things were so cheap, but I wanted one so badly. And you could get much better army men just going to the five and dime, you know. But anyway, they, they get the microbes to fight the other microbes. And, oh, look, the doctor has got himself infected. Well, ain't that a thing? Ain't that a thing? And, oh, look, and if that's not bad enough, they managed to create... Some enlarged microbes. So they're actually macrobes. And again, 
What have we learned? I shall not tamper in God's domain. Oh, and here we see, uh, dig these, get it? <laughs> dig these, they're toy earth movers. They're really, really cool. Oh, and here are these guys that if you sold enough seeds for them, you could win cheap prizes. Um, never actually got involved in it. Every adult I ever suggested it to said, I'll tell you what, if you mow the lawn, I'll give you a few bucks and you could buy something with it. Which always seemed much less time-consuming. And here on the back we see, just in case there haven't been enough advertisements, here we see another advertisement for more money. I wonder how many kids actually took advantage of this. Or should I say, got taken advantage of. But anyway, that's all I got for you today. Um, I hope you enjoyed. Please be good, be safe, be careful. Don't forget to check out our new friend and channel, Things to Rot Your Brains. Enjoy. And until next time, peace.